Have you heard about big cruise ships and small cruise ships and medium cruise ships? What does that mean when we're talking about the size and what's the difference between them? I've got to look at all that up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Cruise ships come in many sizes. So how do you know which size is right for you? And is there such thing as too big when it comes to cruise ships? You can go on cruise ships with as few as a few dozen people and as many as 6,000 people. Ship size reflects a cruise line's plans for the number of activities offered on board, types of savings to offer, and the economics of the market the ship is intended for. With Royal Caribbean, you'll find a great deal of variation between ship sizes that cater to different tastes and offerings. So if you're trying to figure out whether or not a big ship or a small ship is right for you, in today's video, I've got the important consideration. So let's start off with the most obvious question, and that is what makes a ship big or small? If you stand next to almost any cruise ship, they're all going to look big. So what makes one truly a big ship or a small ship? The answer is it's all relative. As cruise ship designs and sizes have changed over the years, measuring cruise ship size is less an exercise in arithmetic and more consideration of how it stacks up to other vessels that already exist. For the sake of argument, I'm going to give you a breakdown of Royal Caribbean cruise ships classes to give you a sense of how they all stack up. So the small ships are the Vision class and the Radiance class. The medium-sized ships are probably the Voyager class. And the big ships are the Freedom, Quantum, Oasis, and soon-to-be Icon class as well. With that in mind, now you can understand that the bigger the ship is, the more there is to do on board. Generally speaking, the larger the ship, the more space that Royal Caribbean has added for things to do while you're on board. Space is always at a premium on a cruise ship. It's not like building a house or an office building where you can continuously expand outwards on a cruise ship you're limited by the size of the vessel. So if a ship is bigger, it will have more room to offer more activities for guests. Royal Caribbean has always separated itself from other cruise lines by offering incredible new activities on board, such as the rock climbing walls, zip line, Central Park, Flow Rider Surf Simulator, and a whole lot more. In order to have all these activities, you need a bigger ship. If you sail on some of the smaller ships in the fleet, like the Radiance class or the Vision class, you're not going to find nearly as many whiz-bang amenities on your ship, and that's just because they don't have enough space for them. For some guests, this matters, and for others, maybe not so much. Equally important to what you can do on the ship is what you can eat on the ship, and these days, the amount of choices you have as to where to dine on your cruise ship matters a lot more than I think it did a couple decades ago. Every ship has a main dining room, windjammer buffet, and at least a few specialty restaurants. Just like activities, bigger ships offer more specialty restaurant choices. It may not seem like diversity of restaurants matters all that much, but some cruisers really prefer to have more choice in where they dine. Others love the main dining room, and that works for them too. Of course, specialty dining does cost extra, and while it is nice to mix up your dinner setting, it will mean a higher vacation cost to do so. Investing in a specialty restaurant package is a good workaround, by the way, to mitigate those extra costs. But if you're looking for variety, if you like having more choice, bigger ships are going to offer more places to dine at. And that also includes complimentary venues as well. In fact, on some of the bigger, newer ships, you're going to find more places to eat, especially closer to the pool deck. That's been a recent change, and that's because they have more space to put these kind of places on board. Another big difference between big ships and small ships is big ships get the latest and greatest. When you watch a television commercial for Royal Caribbean or see a YouTube video ad for them, almost everything you see in that advertisement is pretty much on a new and big ship. Nothing captivates the attention of the public like a big new ship, and the bigger the ship is, the more attention it gets. New cruisers often are enamored with the appeal of experiencing all these amazing things that the cruise ships have to offer, and the absolute best of the best goes to newer ships. Part of the reason why big ships get all these things is because they have the space for it. And part of it is being newer, engineers incorporated these concepts into the design rather than trying to shoehorn them in later on. It is much easier to offer flow riders, water slides, and expansive entertainment venues when you're building it into the design of the ship. Now, of course, where the ship goes does matter, and that also will factor into a difference between a big ship and a small ship. No matter which ship you sail on, you'll be going somewhere to visit different cities, islands, or scenic landscapes. There's no denying that smaller ships can physically fit into more ports than bigger ships. Cruise ships have been around for decades already, and many cruise ports were designed equally a number of years ago for the cruise ships of a different era. Basically, cruise ship size has outpaced cruise ship port accommodations. Now, certainly many ports have upgraded their facilities to be able to handle the bigger ships in the world, especially in places like the Caribbean. But if you have your heart set on seeing some of those beautiful and breathtaking places on a cruise ship, a smaller ship is probably going to get you there. A great example is Alaska, where Radiance-class ships can visit more glaciers and far-flung ports than bigger ships can. 
Cruisers who've been to Alaska will almost always recommend a small ship so that they can see Alaska, quote unquote, the right way. The same argument for small ships can be made for many other ports in Europe, including the Eastern Mediterranean, Baltics, and Scandinavia. But of course, we're talking about big ship versus small ship. Let's talk about what makes the world go round, and that is money. It always comes down to cost, right? Generally speaking, a smaller Royal Caribbean ship will probably cost you less than a bigger one because smaller ships tend to be older. Royal Caribbean puts a premium price tag on its newest ships, and since its newest ships are big ships, you'll find lower prices with the smaller vessels. While prices will vary from sailing to sailing, some of the best values out there can really be found on the smaller cruise ships. This means being able to afford a bigger cabin on a Radiance or Voyager class ship than the similar sailing on an Oasis class ship. However, don't ever book a cruise purely on price. I've actually talked about this in the past. One big mistake a lot of first-time cruisers do is just look for the lowest possible price out there, ignore what the ship does and does not offer, and then they get on board and they're disappointed to realize, oh, there's no water slides on here? Where's that sushi restaurant I heard Matt talk about? Yeah, if you go for the lowest possible price, yeah, you're going to save some money, but you may end up disappointed nonetheless because you picked a ship that doesn't have exactly the things you wanted on it. So really, when you're talking about big ships versus small ships, you're talking about the total package. And it's important to understand that bigger does mean a lot more, but doesn't necessarily mean better in that sense. It really comes down to where you want to go, what you're looking for on board, and of course, your budget. You know, the nice thing about bigger versus smaller is this whole debate has changed a little bit over the last couple of years. With Royal Caribbean upgrading its ships in different programs, most recently the Royal Amplified program, a lot of the existing ships, the Voyager class and the Freedom class especially, have gotten some major upgrades that rival any of the newer and larger ships and for a lot less of a price. So don't just look purely at size, consider the total package when you're picking a ship. And I hope that helps answer the question of bigger versus smaller. Obviously, we're talking here in Royal Caribbean terms. If you want to expand this out to the rest of the cruise industry, my goodness, there's a huge difference when it comes to big, small, tiny, yacht-like mega ships. It really runs the gamut of it. But for today, we're talking about Royal Caribbean. Let me know in the comments below, are you a big ship kind of guy or gal, or are you uh, prefer the small vessels out there? Let me know your preferences in the comments. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that like button. So that way YouTube lets you know you like this video and that way it'll show to other people as well. Subscribe to our channel. So that way YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.